it's time to revise your story. And um, I'm really excited because I think this is a great tool for identifying the parts of a really strong story and making sure your story has them. So what we're going to use to revise today is called a narrative criteria sheet. Narrative is the type of story that you are writing about your neighborhood. Um, and what it does is it asks you to find the literary elements in your story, just like we've been doing for the mastery checks this last week. So um, I'm going to just walk through each element, what it means, and find an example for you in my neighborhood, right? So I've included this um, in yesterday's lesson so you could see sort of my final product. And I'm going to go through the process of revising my best draft for you in this video. So I've got my narrative criteria sheet open. The first thing it tells me to look for is dialogue. I'm supposed to underline it and think about what are the characters saying? Is it clear? And do they each have a unique voice print or way of speaking? So I'm going to first look for some dialogue in my story. Um, mine has a lot of interior dialogue uh, because this is, this, this is that story um, at the bus stop I was describing where um, an old elementary school friend wouldn't really talk to me. So there isn't a lot of dialogue. Um, but I've got internal dialogue in italics. And as I go through the story, oh, I see some dialogue from the second perspective. So first thing I'm noticing there is there's not a lot of stuff to underline. So if possible, I can try to add some more dialogue. Um, what If you notice there's not much for you to underline, you might also want to go back and try to add some more dialogue. And after each section of this video, you're welcome to press pause, find the literary element in, the in your story, make some changes, and then come back to the next one. I don't expect you to necessarily watch this all the way through. So second um, literary element is called blocking. This is super important in a story when you have lots of dialogue. So when people are talking back and forth, blocking is the words next to the dialogue that shows who's talking and what they're doing while they're talking. So like when you read in a book, something like um, he laughed as he leaned back against the wall, that as he leaned back against the wall, that's the blocking. So um, in my story, blocking would be any time, for me, mostly it's going to be around the internal dialogue, um, that there's some sort of action describing what I'm doing while I'm thinking. And that goes in yellow. So as I face back down the fill, oh wow, that's supposed to be hill. That's an example of blocking because it describes what I'm doing as I'm having this thought in italics. Okay, so you want to go through and in your own story, find examples of blocking. And if you see dialogue without blocking next to it, so you've got some underlined stuff, but there's no yellow blocking next to it, you want to pause and see if you can add something for clarity. Who's talking or what are they doing as they're talking? Or you can even add a little attitude. Maybe they're smirking while they're talking. Maybe they're staring off into a different direction while they're talking. Give us a little bit more information through the blocking. And you can think about it just like in real life. There's what people say, but then there's what they're saying with their body and their face. And that's where you get to add that into your story is through blocking. Okay, so pause here, go find those things in your story, come back for number three. All right, number three is character description. So we talked about this in the sample for Our Good Day and also in Neighborhood Hassle. Um, I'm going to find you some character description in my story. That's either physical appearance or actions or behaviors of a character. So when I'm talking about my old teammate, Erin, I can include the, fa the fact that she was walking very quickly and sort of confidently knowing her purpose. That's an example of character description. 
even more here when I use the phrases as she clipped towards me in her Adidas shoes and North Face jacket, right? Clipping kind of like a eager little walk. And um, she's obviously wearing all the latest brands for my childhood anyway. So um, character descriptions can tell you a lot about the character through what they're wearing, doing, or how they're acting, not just what they're saying. All right, so pause here, go find the character description in your own draft, and then come back when you're ready for the next one. All right, number four in your revision is looking for setting description and sensory details. So this is what helps the reader really get a feel for your story. Where are you? Um, and this is where those details that we kept talking about, what does it look like, smell like, sound like, that's where all these details come in. And they really help the reader understand where the story is taking place and what sort of the mood might be. Like, is it a sunny, happy, beautiful day? Or is it more like a dark and stormy night, right? So you can add to your story through those details. So um, I've got some setting description right at the beginning here. Talking about the crisp fall air and the action that it kind of makes me do, like bundle up, um, sort of fits with the mood in this story of a little bit of sort of anxious, crunched up kind of uh, little tie that I tell you about in this story. So um, there's both description and a little bit of mood added into that. Um, so anywhere that you see descriptions in your own story of the place where this story is happening um, is what you want to outline in green. So again, pause here, add um, those highlights to your draft. And if you're noticing with any of these that you don't have very much of that color, that's a good clue to yourself of, oh, I need to add this. These first four elements are required in your narrative. So you have to have these four elements in your final product, okay? So if you don't see one through four, you've got to add them. Um, five through seven here, these are um, optional. So number five is any figurative language. So do you use anything like a metaphor or a simile comparing an experience um, or personification? Maybe there's human qualities given to something non-human. An example might be like the tree stood by wisely or something watching over me, right? That is a, perso a personal trait given to a non-person. So um, the other one that's optional is interior monologue. Like I showed you in my story, there's a lot of it because there's not a lot of dialogue. So I would say you should include this if you don't if you don't have a lot of dialogue in your story, but otherwise it's totally optional. And flashbacks are a fun challenge um, that you can try, like thinking about a character in your story, sort of remembering something else. Um, and I'll show you an example of each one of those. Interior monologue, I've shown you a bunch of already. These are all my thoughts, right? So it's in um, first person with I. And then flashbacks, there's a couple in the second perspective here from my friend Aaron. Um, my brother's voice echoed in my head. Don't care what anyone thinks. Don't care what anyone thinks, right? I'm um, that character's remembering something that happened to her. So that could be starred because it's a flashback. Um, so you are marking these things up. You are um, adding anything that you feel like is missing from your story um, and using that as a guide for what you can add back to your story. So again, one through four, dialogue blocking, character description, and setting are required. Uh, five through seven are not. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this and I look forward to seeing what you're creating.